copy of everything to take away. Okay. So, what do you think is the main thing? If you were to fix one thing in your stroke, what do you think would be the main thing? Um, I think the catch is okay. is probably the problem. I think um, I'm probably a bit too straight an arm okay. on the rest. Um, I'm, I'm pulling it out somewhere over here, uh -huh. here rather than taking the full, full um, strength. Yeah, okay, so you'll catch. Okay. Do you think you hold your breath? Do you think you breathe properly? I think when I'm swimming faster, when I'm going for it, yes, I didn't hold my breath. When okay. I'm thinking about it, I, okay, um, yeah. I'm better, yeah. but it's something I've been kind of working on for a while because I know I do hold my breath up all the time. Yeah. I'm getting better when I'm something slower but when I go for it yeah. I'll still hold my breath. Yeah, okay. I don't say that for any reason, it's just interesting to know because I can't you can't really see very well until you start looking at the water what's going on. Mm. And obviously holding your breath and head position particularly has quite an impact on your overall body position in the water, which has an impact on your the way you move through the water, drag and things like that. Okay. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Now, obviously, you swim, you swim in the squad. Uh, your CSS is 129, 129 and a half, something like that, isn't it? 29.4, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you're not a slow swimmer by any stretch of the imagination. So, normally, when people can swim at that kind of speed, it's, it's kind of more fine tweaks we're looking at than anything substantial. So, we'll play it through, and I'll pick out key points as we go. So, from this angle, kind of full side view, what we look at really is how much of the body, what you look at the recovery, and how much of the head and other body is coming out of the water. See how low the head stays, and how the arms recover over the water. Now that looks quite nice at that stage, this, the lead arm is nice and high, it looks fairly straight from this angle. The arm is recovering. Lifting my head quite a lot. Yeah, lifting your head. And you hate to see your hands coming up there as well. Okay, so mm. the first thing I look at, you go through a kind of an order, like a correction hierarchy, if you like, because we always look at the head and the breathing first, because that affects things further down the chain. If the head's out of position, there's no point trying to fix the legs. No. Because the heads are going to have a direct impact on what the legs are doing. So you fix the head, the legs will be better. Yeah. So you can see straight away that your head is high in the water. Way out, of course. <laughs> yeah, so we should be looking at doing, as we, you know, as you know we, we obviously I'll go through things we should talk about in the squads, top eye breathing, keeping the head low. Now, one of the main things that I've been video analysis done is, is it's you need to have an awareness of what you actually look like and until you see yourself on video you think you do one thing and in actual fact you do something quite different so all right so what we should be looking at here um, just so as you've got it recorded on here more than anything it's very precious Okay, so pop eye breathing. I'm going to say one goggle in the water, one goggle out. Mm. And you can see the bow wave forming around the head here. Yeah. Makes a little trough. You put your mouth over to one side. And you don't need, if you keep your head low, you don't need, or what will happen if you keep your head low, sorry, is this bow wave that's just forming here mm. will stay there. And you'll be able to breathe into that little gap. You don't need to lift your head up. Mm. The fact that you lift your head up, what happens is it wipes out the bow wave each time. The bow wave gets disturbed. Right. So you keep your head nice and still. You see this bow wave here? Yeah. It should remain there all the time. You do a little dip actually. So if we play you through. There's a lot of movement going on with that head of yours, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, it is. It's quite lovely. It's 
bobbing around, moving around. <laughs> and that's disturbing. That's that's ruining your opportunity to get that nice bow wave for. Just to show you uh, what it should, what it can look like to get it right, if you look at this guy's head. You could almost spot it at the angle. There you go. You could almost balance a glass of wine back in his head. This does not move. That's what you want to wait for. <laughs> this, is the guy, this is the guy that Mr. Smooth is model of. John Ovan Hazel. He does miss the Olympics, so it's pretty good. Okay, so we know we need to keep your head still. Yeah. All right. Now, when we go under the water, when we lift the head up, this will have the effect of the body dropping down. Now, it's not too bad, but we ideally we want to have our body. See the lane ropes there. We want to have our body staying as high in the water as possible. See where you are there? Nice and high, your bottom's on the surface of the water there. As soon as you turn to take that breath, you come down here. Okay? And especially because you're losing the support of the lean arm, which is what you mentioned earlier. Quite low as well. Mm. In terms of the kick, you want to be swimming through a almost swimming through a tube. So the kick should be remaining within that tube. I thought I had as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So watch the kick when you breathe. That's where you end up with a you see this from the top you'll end up with a bigger splitting because what's happening here so that's about on that side but we'll read on the right if we get that far actually it wasn't too bad that time seems to be that kind of mid kick there but there's a lot of there's a lot more movement in the legs than there should be um, and again, I always try and put comparisons in so you can see what they look like. See, so you can see the um, best case, you know, what it, what it, what it should look like. So, uh, yeah. Ah, shows that's one. Now, Shelly Taylor Smith is an open water swimmer, okay? Multiple world champion. Look at her legs. Mm. Now, she's got a two big kick. She's got a different kick to you. But the fact that she swims through these tram lines, makes, that's what makes her super efficient. It's amazing that you get a shot. I know it's not much about the legs when you're doing, particularly when doing triathlon, but having a two beat kick like that is amazing you actually get anything out of it at all. Yeah, but it's not about propulsion. For you, the triathlete, it's not about propulsion, mm. it's about balance. And that's all she uses her leg kick for. Mm. She balances up each arm stroke. Two big kick. Kicks aren't important, but if you're going to kick, you have to kick. It has to be efficient, mm. so we need to try and keep it together, keep the toes together. A six week kick's fine, but as long as it's doing the right thing and it's staying behind the body line, we don't want it to open up, like, because ultimately what that is, is a parachute. It's causing drag, that's going to cause you to slow down. Mm. Right? Now, some of this will be caused by the arms, which we'll look at. <laughs> now it might sound like I'm 
obviously we're here for stroke correction, we're here to try and find out what you can do with your stroke. It may sound like I'm saying, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, and all that No, kind of no, stuff. it's fine. If you don't tell me what's not right, then I won't, won't be able to improve it. You are a good swimmer. You can swim sub six, 400 metres, you're a good swimmer. Okay, there are good elements to your stroke. You've got nice timing, nice rhythm and timing to your stroke. Um, but it can, I'm kind of aware that sometimes it can feel like, oh, you, you go away from me and you feel like, oh, I might as well give it all Don't up. Worry. You know. <laughs> so, so far, head position. We know we could do a bit of a kick tune up. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at. In fact, we haven't looked at the breathing, have we? Let's have a look at this breathing as in holding our breath. So, you're breathing out there, look. But like you say, it might only be. See, that's when you see when you take, go to take a breath. You watch your head. And you look up. Yeah, and then out. And then out. Yeah. We need to rotate like you're on a spit. And then you won't have this arching of your back and your mm. bum dropping. That will be a big win. Mm. You get used to not to stop doing that. That'll be a big win. Okay, so you're taking a breath, you're immediately blowing out there, that looks good. You may be able to be when you work harder, like you say, you start holding your breath, but it looks fine now. Keep going that speed, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so recovering over the water. It's quite a high recovery. Some swimmers kind of almost drag their fingertips on the water. That's I did it. notice on one, one of one of the lengths, mm -hmm. I did drag my fingers, mm -hmm. which I don't normally do. Yeah, okay. I don't normally notice that I do, but on the, on the left. It's normally because there's a lack of rotation there. If you don't, if you don't rotate enough, you don't you come in a bit shallower. That looks okay. That looks okay. Now, what I am seeing here is your arm is heading over that way. Mm. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. I think that one crosses over. Yeah. That one feels as yeah. it doesn't. So you're kind of heading over that in that direction with the arm, and then we'll have a look at that arm under the water in a minute. But the, the lead arm is slipping under the water, pulling out wide, as you say, straight and wide. It's a nice rotation there. Let's have a look at them on the way back. So. Mm, it's dead straight. Yeah, I'm looking at this one at the moment. So I'm just watching it enter into the water. Now, what you are doing there is you're pushing down. So that hand is pushing down on the water. Again, push down the water, the head will go up, the legs will drop. Okay. These are all related to the same thing. If we can get you rotating, you won't have the pushing up at the front end and the legs dropping down. So we're pushing down. We're still pushing down this way. So you're not really starting to get any backwards propulsion no. until you get down here. So we need to be getting into our catch a little bit earlier. Again, just to show you what, show you what it looks what it can look like. You get messages from Dan Hall on your recording that. Lincoln. She's not too shabby in the pool. She actually comes down a little bit like that as well. So even she's got things in her, in her stroke that she can improve upon. 
But what she does do is, as soon as her hands get in the water, she tips her fingertips down, look at her elbow, and she immediately starts pushing back. High elbow pushing back, whereas yours is pushing quite wide and straight. All right, so yeah, I mean, you said that earlier that you thought you were doing that. And again, on the, the left arm, So, have a look at this from above. We've got a bit of a kind of a catching up of the arms there. You've got them both at the front. <laughs> As we look at Rebecca, by the time her recovering arm comes in, this one's more or less underneath the body, underneath the shoulder. And there's yours. You've actually got them both towards the front here. So, there's that push down. So, we want to be getting, that, getting those fingertips down. Engaging the catch, and you're slipping through. You're slipping down in the water here because you haven't got that purchase. You haven't got that leverage at the front end of the stroke caused by what would be what you get from the catch. And if you play, if you play her. The body position of the water doesn't change. Because all these things basically cause a little decelerations in the stroke. And as soon as you decelerate, you start to sink down in the water. I think she's swimming at about 112. It always looks worse than this. <laughs> Now, what's happening here is because you're because the arm is slipping through the water and you're not getting the leverage, your kind of timing is out on a stroke, which is why it looks a little bit awkward. That's okay there. But at that point you want to be getting that arm, that hand down, the elbow up high. He's pushing through straight, coming through straight. These are good things. These are really kind of positive, kind of juicy things if you like that we can get stuck into. Yeah, Do no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So above? Oh, nice shoes. <laughs> Nice and straight there. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about this. I know when I push off, I've got into a habit over the years of pushing off and lifting my head. And then, yeah. And I know it's acting like a break when I push off. And I've always done it because when I'm swimming in a lane with lots of people, I'm not going to bump into somebody. And now it's become a habit. Whenever I push up, and it's not a major issue in open water anyway, but when I push up from the end, the first thing I do is go like that. Yeah. And then I yeah. start swimming. Yeah. That head has got to stay part of the rest of your body all the time, really. I mean, it's a good point about open water swimming because, yeah, you will be. It is an advantage to have to, to lift your head and not be not be too kind of rigid and have a bit of movement in the head because you're going to be looking around and sighting. But you want to obviously control it and be able to do it at the right times. So let's have a look at you above then. So what we're looking at from this angle then is the alignment. So again, in the same way as we, uh, we looked at the kind of side profile, we want to be swimming along this tube. We want things to be staying in that tube, going in the direction of travel as much as possible. Now you start really kicking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you start really kicking. Let's get rid of those lines. So immediately what we're seeing here, as you turn to breathe, the hand is going over that way. That arm should be straight in front of the shoulder here. So we need to look at your alignment. It does sweep out wide as you continue to rotate to breathe. 
It kind of indicates maybe a possible um, more improvement of flexibility in the shoulders there. Mm. So you haven't got the if you haven't got the range of motion in the shoulders to get that, keep that arm out wide, then it's naturally going to come over the centre. I knew that one was because that one certainly doesn't have the same range of yeah. movement. I kind of thought that one was going a bit straight. Yeah, it's, not, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. Across. It's okay there. It's okay there. But as you know, what you're doing here is you're pulling out wide with that hand. It's just not, it's not staying high. So that's not too bad at that. I mean, you kind of you do look like you're heading over that way. But by the time you actually go into the water, then what you've got there is you've got an inward rotation of the shoulder. If you've got an inward rotation of the shoulder, you're going to push out wide. Do you have any shoulder issues on the left? Yeah, I do that side, yeah. That's why we're entering here from entry. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and make sure that we get that a nice flat spear into the water. So we're going to spend some time today looking at your head position, keeping that head still. And we're going to look at, I mean, to be honest, they're going to be some of the drills that you do at the, in the squads. But the difference here is I can give you specific feedback to make yeah. sure you get it right. Yeah. Because I had Simon Taylor down here the other day, and it happens all the time, actually. I've been doing it wrong for God knows how long. And it's, that feedback is so valuable. You can only do so much in the, in the squads. Um, so, you know, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, some people, their hands are pointing over there, the other one's pointing over there, and it's, it's terrible. It's, it's not that bad. There is a little bit of a curve here. If you look at the overall shape, it's a little bit kind of binary, but not too bad. It really isn't too bad. But this sweeping out wide is having an impact on what the legs are doing. Because you're going like that, your legs have to balance you up by splitting. So we want to be, we want you to be straight, not pushing out, pushing out wide. So this comes quite wide, it swings right round the outside. Which wouldn't be so bad if it came in and stopped here and went straight, mm. but it kind of the momentum takes it round. Yeah. And again, if I if I show you uh, if I compare you to John, it just says so you can see what what it should kind of look like. It's always good to visualise it. So if you look at his alignment, down the black line there, his head stays still, his recovering arm comes over the top. I mean, his is arguably, you could say his is kind of heading over there a little bit, but marginally. What's the line? Yeah. It's bang in front of his line. head. And then the recovering hand comes over the top. It goes dead straight. So it's, you can see the difference in the alignment. Yeah. Yeah. So what we'll do is we will run through. Um, I won't show you the head positions on here, so you can just run through that. Yeah. We'll quickly look at um, keep on the side. Now, what a lot of people do with keep on the side is they have their arm straight. Now, if you have hold your arm, hold your arm out like that now. Now, if you try and try and catch from that position, what do you have to do with the elbow? Out, okay. So when you're doing six on six, you want to be slightly rotated because if you try and catch from there, 
you can go into the cat. If you're straight, you can't. You can only push down straight from that position without going like that first. So you want to get used to on a drill with that elbow high, slightly rotated out, and you can you can test this kick on the side because if you can go like that from that position, you're in the right position. If you can't, because you physically can't bend that way, yeah. that's what most people do is they yeah. hold it like that. Yeah. And that's quite an important change because you've got to be able to get, get into that catch. There's no point in drilling yourself to do something where you can't bend. Yeah, that's, that feels quite yeah? strange in my shoulder. Yeah. So, yeah, that's gonna so we need to train ourselves. To... Yeah, well, we can go through that. We need to train ourselves to be in that position. So, and you can do kick on the side. And just every now and again, just go, yeah, I can bend my elbow. And that arm should come down underneath the shoulder. Like that. Well, you, you can't. You can't physically can't do it. Okay. But we need to set ourselves up right to be able to do that. Okay. So we'll do some drilling on the side and make sure we get that position nailed. And then. Again, just says you've got them on here more than anything. So same thing, 616. But we'll spend some time focusing on it because if you watch what he does here, because you're staying nice in alignment like John O'Bahaver was, but this recovering arm. <laughs> goes up, goes high, and then spears in, spears in, controlled. Okay? It doesn't it doesn't kind of just come round, it spears in, so straight. So there's a there's a you've got to concentrate and that is part of the key part of the drill is staying straight. And then regain control. Okay, so there's that. And then a really good drill for you, 636 wants a progression of 616. So 636, uh, sorry, um, uh, broken arrow. Too many buttons on it, I get confused with that. Let's press, right, so broken arrow. Again, we're still doing the same thing, we're working on our alignment. And what that does is it opens out the chest. It opens up the chest. And you can pause. You, you can go through, you can actually concentrate on what you're doing here with this drill. Rather than just kind of, like in the squads, it can be a little bit rushed and you're just trying to get to the other end, you're in a line of people. You've got to get the drill right. So pause at the top, open your shoulders, and again, same as we showed in the 616. Spears in, spears in high, spears in straight. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are the key drills for us to work on. I know they're not all kind of Gucci new drills, you haven't seen them before, <laughs> but they are. They're, they are the kind of key drills, um, the primary drills that, that most people to guys who've got alignment things that need to be sorted out need to go to, but again, we need to get it right. Um, if you can sort your alignment out, sort your head position out, sort your alignment out, catch, set yourself up for a nice catch. Your catch will improve without us doing much sculling and doggy paddle and all that kind of thing because you'll be in a position to get it and more naturally get a good catch. You're not setting yourself, your catch upright, mm. which is why catch is kind of going to pieces a little bit. Yeah. Um, catch should improve itself if you set it up right to do so. That's really, I think that's all I need to go through really. What we can do is we can go through this and we can work out in the squads and I can keep a close eye on you and make sure that we're kind of getting these right. And 
and then maybe, I don't know, six or eight weeks, we'll get you back in and we should hopefully kind of progress from there and start looking at tuning up things like the catch in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's pretty much all we need to go through now. Mm -hmm. Right? Have you got any questions or is there anything else that you think you'd like to see or cover? No, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if I get that alignment right, how, yeah. how things change with that arm swinging out and, and whether getting that, whether there's something stopping me getting that alignment or whether it's just happening. So when, yeah. when I try and do it right, oh, physically, if there's something. See if, if, if I'm sort of correct, I'm, I'm changing the way I'm doing things because I don't have that motion or because it hurts or just because that's, that's how I swim, which may, it may well be. And it'd just be interesting to see if um, yeah. what I need to do, if there's anything I need to do out of the pool to, to improve that strength or range of movement. I think that's what John was um, wondering as well, if that shoulder needs some, some work on it. Because it's, it's certainly weak in, in some of the things that he's tried to get me to do and I just can't do. But your shoulder, your shoulder is sore because you're haven't got the correct form in yeah, the pool. It's, it's so which it's, is coming it's that, first. I just, yeah, I mean, as soon as you start to over rotate, so as soon as you start to enter in thump first, yeah. coming around too wide and you're going like that, our drills are going to get you to come up high and then spear in that way. You shouldn't have that. Your catch, all the, all the, um, the strength in swimming, if you like, should come from your chest and come from your lats. You shouldn't come from your shoulders. Mm. It only comes from your shoulders if you push down straight. Yeah. Um, have you ever seen the, um, have I ever, I don't know if done a demo with you about the difference, what it feels like when you pull from your shoulder, when you pull from the lats? I'll show you that in a second. It's quite a, it's quite a, it opens your mind up, your eyes up to the difference in power you can generate if you use the correct muscles. You shouldn't be using your shoulders. You shouldn't be using your shoulders. So I'll show you something about that. All right. I think it will sort, it will help your shoulder. Yeah. It will help your shoulder. Um, okay, right, let's switch this off. Stop.